I'm going to be talking about the best compact lenses from Pentax, uh, specifically within the M series. Because the M series cameras and lens system was what was unique about it is that it was a little bit smaller, quite a bit smaller actually, than the former K series bodies and lenses. I've chosen them for uh, reasons. Uh, these are all extraordinarily small for their focal lengths. When they went to the M series, they, the, lines, the lenses that came with it were also designed to be pretty much as small as they could make them. I'm gonna start with this one. The Pentax 35 millimeter f2.8. This lens, if you read, a lot of stuff on the internet it's really not that well reviewed and that may be because it doesn't particularly excel in any one area it is however about the best all-rounder 35 that Pentax has made it's very sharp very punchy colors plenty of 3d uh, roundness effect and uh, bokeh is not bad it's small it's compact it's everything an M series lens should be. Uh, this, the, this lens is six elements in six groups. It's only got five aperture blades. But uh, you know, a five aperture blade Sunstars really are, they're really nice. It's, this lens I found is really resistant to flare and uh, no ghosting. It's like I say, it's a really just all around 35 millimeter lens, very small. I think it gets a bad rap because the M series 28 2.8 I wasn't particularly particularly impressed with it at least not as much so as this one not that it's a bad lens but this is really uh, an underrated lens one of the uh, issues that it commonly has is the stopping down of the aperture can get sticky both this one and the 28 that's the problem that is the most common with those lenses aperture sticks on stop down uh, this one had the problem still has it to some degree doesn't bother me because I'm not using that part of the lens anyway uh, the next one is the smallest lens for 35 millimeters that Pentax has ever made at least up until this point. I, the, the DA, I'm not sure, but I think this may be smaller than it. This is the 40 millimeter f2.8, again, M series. Uh, only focuses down to 60 centimeters, which uh, this last one, the 35, it focuses down to 35 to 30 centimeters, which is really close for a 35 millimeter lens. This one, not so much you're gonna you know but look how small that is it's tiny it's really tiny five aperture blades five elements in four groups not a lot of glass in this thing uh, as far as measuring the actual optics the elements themselves there's about almost the same amount as the 50 millimeter f2 which is a really good lens i just didn't i could almost put six lenses in this came out in 1976 the same time as the this was the would have been one of the first the ME camera came out in 76 and this would have been well equipped on well an ME or an ME super even better in 1980 um, the next one this 85 f2 a really good portrait lens and uh, it has a really unique bokeh you would want to use this with a hood in most cases. And I've, I've actually included here, I've kind of been neglecting to show you, but I wanted to show you how I carry these hoods because I got a nice little system. They all fit together. That is about as small as you can get for all the hoods for these lenses that you need right here. And I got a cap there. I've got a 49 standard that'll screw into either of these actually I could go with that one if I wanted however the actual lens hood for this is a clip-on and or is plastic I, I like I say you can get away with the metal if you like but this is a very small lens it's almost the exact same size as the 51 fours either the Takumar or the SMC 
it's 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 about the same size as either of those I'd say uh, five elements in four groups not a lot of glass a lot of light transmission six aperture blades really good color punch um, my copy somebody wanted to put it on Canon camera and took a grinder and ground off the tabs on the back there so it, it had metal inside it it needed a rebuild it had a bent filtering but you know optically it's really it's fine uh, the bokeh on this thing is really unique it's almost swirly and it's got a sweet spot about f2.8 um, it's not the closest focusing lens for an 85 out there it's closest it's closest focus is 85 centimeters this lens tends to lean just a little bit blue if you shoot it wide open for a long period of time say 15 or 20 seconds at at uh, f2.8 or f2. It's, it's uniquely small like an M series lens should be. Uh, I really like this lens. Real clean, real small, 85 that's just, it's heavy, it's a tank. Very nice. Um, this one is uh, pretty well renowned already it's very cheap readily available uh, the 135 35 it's got a built-in lens hood extends out it's just sweet doesn't focus the closest of any of the lenses what is it it's 150 centimeters closest focusing which i've found i i do use this with extension tubes on occasion but it's close enough for most things. It's just right. It's small. It's small. That's a 135. Tiny. Uh, five elements in five groups. Eight aperture blades in this one. Very nice. Um, 270 grams. That's, those, those are the things you really want to know about it. And this one, which is the first star lens from Pentax. The 300 millimeter F4. Star lenses were lenses that were optically, uh, the, the, the peak of their engineering, the things the engineers would have been proud of, most proud of, we'll say, because they, they should be proud of them all. They're all good lenses from Pentax. But this one, like I say, these are the uniquely small more compact than they should be, but than they could be, but they are. And uh, the 300 F4, I don't mind telling you, I dropped it onto solid sandstone from about from waist high. I thought I had my hip pack thing zipped up, and it rolled right off, smacked face first into the sandstone. There is a mark there. Luckily, the glass didn't go right into something sharp. It rolled maybe five or six or 10 feet down the sandstone. It's perfect. I checked it on the, I did the brick wall test. It's fine. Even I, I bent the filtering back. It's got a nice built-in lens hood. It also has, and I have it, but I don't use it, is a, uh, a screw-on lens hood that you can use in case you're using a polarizer with that, then you're gonna need a longer lens hood which actually this lens hood is arguably not long enough. It could be a little longer. But the thing I don't like about the screw-on lens hood is it's a separate thing that's about that big and it's just not worth it when you've got the built-in that's, you know, you can make it work. You really can. I can. Um, this lens is, like I say, particularly small. It's smaller than my Takamar 200-3.5 with a teleconverter. I use it with a 1.4 teleconverter and uh, it comes out to a 420 millimeter. It's tiny. It's about the size of the 200 F4 in length and it's obviously a little bit bigger diameter. But the first M series lens, the A optics are the same as this. Um, 
really good lens. The, uh, I, I carry this instead of a 400 with a teleconverter with this kit uh, because of the fact that I'll keep it with me. I'm, I've almost always got a 300 with me and I've almost got a 420 with me too with the converter. So it's a really good. When I'm looking for a small kit, this is, this is basically my kit as far as if I want a small kit. You know, and for a special, if I know exactly what I'm using, I'll probably just bring something maybe a little bigger. But for a kit, this is really just about as ideal as I think I can get. Now, I'll show you what you would want, what I typically would want to add to this, what I brought, for example, today in my bag. This could be just as well an in my bag video. Uh, the teleconverter I just mentioned, it's an A series. A little bit newer. It's got the aperture contacts and things, but. For my purposes, it's optically, it matches really well with the 300 or the 85. And then that gives me like a 100-ish, a, a little over 100, and a 420. So it's uh, good numbers. This, uh, I should add, this teleconverter, it's five elements. So you're going to add some glass with this. It's not that I try to use it, but with, you know, these are so... If you're using it with the right lenses, which these are, it really, it shines. Um, there, for different telephotos, they make a different teleconverter. I don't use this with a 50. Uh, I only use it with a telephoto, not with a wide angle. So that would be in my kit along with it. Um, the hoods I mentioned, there's the standard and a wide angle and of course for the 85 I'm, I'm going to make sure I have the right hood with a cap because a lot of times I like that one to leave the hood on and like I say I can easily store it away like this it's pretty cool, pretty cool kit. and then the other lens that's missing from this would be an ultra wide angle and of course a, a digital body because I'm not shooting on film, at least not every day. And the, the M series 20 is good lens, but this A series is a little faster lens. And it's really not much bigger, and I prefer it. The SuperTac 20 is a little bit less glass, but in most cases I prefer the A series as far as a round kit to go with my M series might be that at least today it's this and I'd say if you had this you'd have from a 20 to 35 or 40 which is yeah, arguably redundant however this lens I didn't tell you is somewhat of an art lens I would call it a total art lens actually it's got a glow and a look and a something about it a character you have that, you have an entire kit. Let's get these that we're not using. We'll leave those home, but put your kit together optically. You're looking at, with a body, you're looking at a kit that's that size, and these you throw in somewhere, you know? Look at that. That's pretty small. That's a full, what I would call a professional quality kit for anybody, for any purposes for any reasonable person okay and uh, look at that small there you have it those are the those are your your Pentax smallest the epitome of the M series line